first to try their luck tonight are siblings Ben and Harry Tucker from Somerset. I'm the older brother. I'm two years older. We're a bit like chalk and cheese, but that works really well. Yeah, I'd like to think. <laughs> <laughs> They're brimming with confidence about their range of repurposed products. I think it'll be a bit of a wow factor with the chair, because it's immense. <laughs> We're hoping to put a smile on their face. That's kind of what we like to do with our products. Hello, I'm Ben. And I'm Harry. We are both brothers, business partners, and founders of Plain Industries. We're here today, asked for £80,000 in exchange for 10% of our business. At Plain, we take old scrap materials from aircraft and turn them into luxury furniture, stationery and luggage. Each piece has a fascinating backstory attached to it. And for us, it's about challenging and redefining our perceptions of the thing we, things we throw away. We make some pretty wacky stuff. We have some bombs into drinks cabinets, exhaust nozzles into giant lamps, and even windows into clocks. Here's an example of our chair. This is made from an engine cowling of an aircraft, and this retails for £19,000. We started four years ago on a farm in Wiltshire with about £3,000 in our back pocket. We now have five members of staff, and we have turned over almost half a million pounds since 2013. The stories attached to each and every item are the most important thing about what we do. We set up bespoke furniture to very wealthy clients around the world. We now want to scale the business, so we currently are making luxury luggage from the discarded seating fabric coming in at a much more accessible price point. Soon, we're about to launch our stationary and homeware range that is cast from the fuselage of all different types of aircraft. We'd love for you to join us on our journey. Is it possible to have a look at some of the finishes? By all means, and if you'd yeah. like to take a seat in the chair, um, feel free. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at that. Look. Yeah. It's a top flight pitch from Ben and Harry Tucker, who are asking for £80,000 for a 10% share of their plane parts upcycling business. Do you know what? I can't resist getting in. Are you ready, guys? If you'd like to all go and sit down, we'll, uh, we'll just stay here for the rest of the Get ready for takeoff. Here and we go. We go. <laughs> <laughs> Faster? No. No, slower. <laughs> <laughs> and once everyone's feet are firmly back on the ground, it's Tej Lalvani who's first in the pilot's seat. I actually love aviation. As a kid, I've always travelled on aeroplanes and just enjoyed the whole experience. Um, what do the numbers look like over the last three years? In year one, we turned over £24,000 and we made a loss of £8,000. Year two, we had a um, turnover of £107,000 and £11,000 net profit. Year three, um, we turned over £85,000 and we made a loss of £14,000. And in the last financial year, we've had a total turnover of £250,000 with a net that's expected to be anywhere between 60 to 70. Um, so just what was the reason for the, for the drop? So it was every time we had a drop, it was generally when we kind of went back and designed the new product lines. And we spent a huge amount of time trying to figure out how everything can be scaled. Um, how do you source your materials and your base products so, then? When we had the idea, we went and met up at a big um, aircraft dismantling yard, and they break on average about 55 to 60 aircraft a year, um, and they also sell all the parts, so that's where we get our parts from. So they break them, and you've come along and said, oh, we'll have the, the, this bit and this yeah. bit. Yeah, that's yeah. how it started. And the reason why we, we're doing the luggage is because the seating fabric is a, quite a big problem in the industry to get rid of, because it's fire retardant, so loads and loads of it, unfortunately, goes to landfill. So the company we're working with, they'll just ship it to us all free of charge. This is some of the examples of the bags. The brothers have revealed strong upcycling credentials. And now, eco-conscious Deborah Meaden is keen to find out more about their business model. Where are you finding your customers? So primarily it's all online. Um, and what we find is every time we launch what we call kind of a halo product, which we try and do once a year, it kind of booms online and then we kind of get a lot of organic traffic. So they come in via that product yes. yeah. and then they end up buying into the whole story yeah. piece. And how long does that take you to build? So they take about um, four months. How much does that cost you to make? About £7,000. Including, including your time. Including our time. That's good. Deborah Meaden is impressed that their first-class products come with economy costs. 
become their run as den high flyers continue under Peter Jones's questioning. You've got your hero product, and you can see that, you know, Deborah and I liked it. Not just the aesthetic look, we enjoyed being in there, actually, I think, if we were honest with each other. Um, <laughs> but... uh, do you want to challenge that? Um... I don't, actually. No, it, I have to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have a, a, a genuine issue with the quality of the bag. OK. I think it's really substandard and quite poor quality. You've started to introduce products that aren't good enough. Mm. I'd have to argue with regards to quality, the actual feel and touch of it, because we've tested them for a year and they're... You do, but I even feel that the zip, it just feels... It doesn't... And then you've got the story inside. Yeah. Yeah. Feet in the air. You've just put 36,000. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that during its lifespan, it would have travelled at 36,000 feet in the but air. But it might have travelled at 37. Yeah, no, so that's something that we're also still working on, is kind of, we appreciate that the really important part about this is, is, is the storytelling. My very point is that you haven't given the story. And it does look like a 1960s British Midland aircraft cover. But the reason why I actually used that fabric to start with is because we thought, let's use the worst looking fabric we could possibly take off any of the aircraft and see if we could turn it into a beautiful product. Well, I think that's good because you definitely failed. OK. Guys, what are you doing? I think you will struggle with bags. With bags, OK. And if you're relying on the bag business, I think you're going to have a problem. The reason why we did the bags was mainly because there's so much material and there's such a problem there. We kind of thought, what we could we do with this problem? And that kind of led us down the route of the bags. But the problem you're trying to solve hmm. is going to take your business backwards. Now, I, I would have thought you're better off doing amazing product and charging double. Yeah. Because the person who wants to buy that will pay 50,000 if they really want to buy it. I love the hero products. I know that there's big potential on furniture. But your business at the moment is small. Yeah. I mean, you've got a great product, but it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, it's not quick. And for that reason, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman is the first dragon out, rejecting a deal over concerns about the entrepreneur's business strategy. And now, plane enthusiast Tej Lalvani has some concerns about whether the pair's designs are truly top flight. You guys are very creative and you've created some nice products. But actually, the home furnishings you've got there, you can't really tell it's from an aeroplane or aviation related. If I'm paying a premium to get those items, I want it to be able to say what it is. Well, that, that's where the branding comes in. So kind of when you open it up, you'll kind of find all the information about what it used to be. No, but even on that, there's no logo on, on the item on that top. Just, yeah. <laughs> there will be, that's just the prototype. It's very hard to get those details in the very first prototype. But that should have been your primary purpose. Whatever you're designing should directly tell you, like, obviously you can't Absolutely. Uh, miss that. You know straight away it's from an aeroplane, uh, an engine. But those small items, I think that it's just, you're spending all that time doing it and creating it, and it doesn't visually tell you it's from an aircraft. Um, sadly, it's not something for me, so I'm out. OK, thank you. Let me tell you where I am. Um, that item is wonderful. Now, has that got the provenance on it somewhere? It can do, because when no, I... Well, I know you keep saying, can do, we're doing that, we're developing this, and so on and so forth. So I'm disappointed where you're at in four years. There's too much that you're still thinking about. And to come in here and say your business is worth 800,000 is poppycock at this stage. So, I'm out. Two more dragons exit the deal in quick succession, both unhappy that the stories of the plain part products are not clearly on display. Will Deborah Meaden get on board with the aircraft reclaimers? You won't be surprised to hear that everything you're doing I absolutely love because I like the sentiment behind it. I get the sense that you really care about it as well and I absolutely love that. 
that could lead to an investment from me. My thing is, I urge you to focus on that. We didn't plow all our efforts into that because we knew that we wanted to diversify. And that's why we've been working on this line since uh, September last year. So if this continues to grow and we get continuous orders, that's fine, but... Don't I, I... put more time into it because your business is telling you something and you need to listen to it. Your business is telling you that's where the money is. But I don't personally think that this business is going to get huge. I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Despite connecting with Ben and Harry's business ethos, Deborah Meaden does not see enough financial potential to invest. And now, only Peter Jones remains to salvage the sibling's pitch. Typically, how long would that take to put together? Uh, about um, an hour? Well, I'd say, yeah, a couple, a few hours. Well, Harry and Ben, yep. I'm going to make you an offer. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to offer you £10,000 for that so you don't have to take it home with you. That one's actually that's sold actually to a <laughs> that's, going, <laughs> that's, that's, that's going, going to uh, Holland. <laughs> but we're happy to make you one. So is that a deal that you're accepting? Well, has to get more. We work on a 50% margin. It literally costs us, well, it costs us seven, doesn't it? Just over 50. But we sell them for 19. And we'll make it bespoke as well. It's the colour you want, the interior you want. Engraved with his name on the top. If you want it. OK. Done. OK. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can't and then go back. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And then, guys, um, I think that, for me, sums up what I believe and see in the business. I love the product, obviously, that's why I've offered to buy one, but I don't believe in the, in the business direction you're going in. And that's the only reason why I'm out. So Peter Jones has shaken hands on a sale. So um, what colour are you having, Peter? That's lovely. I quite like that. That's nice. Make sure you have your name, the aircraft, the whole thing. The brothers have acquired a Dragon client, but they leave without landing the deal they were hoping for. It's kind of mixed emotions. And there's yeah. some really valid points there as well that we'll take on board. Yeah. And we sold a chair to Peter, so that's cool. <laughs>